Fenshaw and Chrisley, Grayson Road. Please make a snap. Listen, you better make a move because he was really moving. He was going fast. Five minutes ago. Short, fair, unshaven. Here you go, Mum. No, thanks. You had no sleep last night. You mind you go have a lie down and get some sleep, mate? I'll be here to answer the phone in that. I'm all right. I'll get dressed in it, go down the store. Oh, don't be daft. You don't have to pretend in front of me, okay? So humiliating, Harry, and I shouldn't have to be talking to you about these things. I'm your son. You don't have to put a brave face on it in front of me. But I feel like I've let you down. I've done something disgusting. I mean, mothers shouldn't get into these scrapes. Look, it was hardly a scrape, was it? I don't know. Maybe I walked into it. Maybe I was Will just... you stop it? Will you stop blaming yourself? Just wait until Dad gets back and you can chat it over with him. Yeah, right. What time do you think you get here? Anyway, I don't know what's happened, so he won't come back in a tearing hurry, will he? Uncle Arthur seems to reckon around about dinner time. It's all right, Mum. Mum, it's all right. Don't worry, I'll get here. Don't worry. How are you? How is she? Okay, it's only me. Mm -hmm. Look, I think you ought to know. Michelle's just seen Wilmot Brown. What? Where? Well, would you believe on his way round here to see you? Oh, no. no but listen, don't worry. She'll soon put a stop to it. He's miles away by now. Here, Colin. Mm -hmm. Castle's still not open. She's definitely involved. No matter what no one says. Yes, Doc. I mean, because she's not there, you see. Here. I don't suppose she was in the fire, do you? No, no. Pauline would have said... Doc, they've already established that. There was no one in the... No. Pete's door ain't open. Oh, well, of course, it wouldn't be, would it? Silly me. No, because he's in Leon C. Yeah, but Ian could have opened it. That's another peculiar thing. Oh, look, there's a police car. Oh, I wish I knew what was going on. Well, I think he's going to the wine bar. Doc, they're interviewing people, that's all, with witnesses. Do you think I'll tell her about that candlelit supper? Which I can't tell you about, of course, except to say that a certain barmaid and a certain landlord may or may not have had a secret assignation while a certain husband was away. Yeah, well, I... Just, what is it? Terrorists, Dot. What? I suspected as much all along. Now I've heard definite. They just took away a device. A device? A timing device for a bomb. A bomb? And there might be others. You better look out for suspicious packages. Oh, Lord. Well, whatever you do, don't put any of it in hot wash. Oh, Colin. Ooh. A doctor? Oh, come on. Don't be absurd. I think my client would appreciate seeing the officer in charge of the case before we agree to a medical. Inspector Gray's been informed, sir. He's on his way back. Look, surely to goodness no one's taking this ridiculous charge seriously. It's complete nonsense. The world's going mad. I come here of my own free will to find out what's going on, to find out what's happening to my pub, and I'm told I'm under arrest. Um, no, you're not under arrest, James. Merely being held for question. Oh, the whole thing's monstrous. I'm sorry, sir, but in view of the allegations... Which I'm... I deny utterly and completely. Doctor's here now. You haven't bought any chance at a bath or a change of clothes since the incident. How could I have? I don't have a bath or a change of clothes any longer, do I? Look, I'm not denying that Mrs. Beale and I have a, a relationship. So what's the point of all this rigmarole? If you're taking his clothes for forensic, you, uh, you do appreciate my client lost everything in the fire. Oh, that's all right, sir. He could have one of our boiler suits. Yeah, I'm tired as well. What can we do about it? Yeah. Coming this way. I'll tell you what we can do. We're going to have to climb down. What? See the girls and say yes to them. If I'm up all night, I need some sleep in the morning, not to be on it's the thing right, at the crack okay, of dawn. Okay. Is Guzin coming today? Yes, yeah, she Can we talk to them? Yeah. Right, let's do it properly this time. We'll take him Mr. out for Kareem's a drink. Hey, to be on our you side. suppose it could have been Mr. Kareem? Mr. Kareem will plant the bomb. He's a coroner. He might be a terrorist. Oh, so let's end up on that. Hey, Charles. Charles, 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 do us a favour. As soon as you're not too busy with the haulage business, uh, how about standing in for us at lunchtime? Yeah, just for an hour, mate. Ali and I have got some urgent business. Oh, hey, yeah. We're coming a meal and as much drink and whatever you want to eat as possible. Thanks, Charlie. You're oh. a pal. What ridiculous pantomime that was. And now what? We just have to wait for Inspector Grace. Well, how long is that likely to be? He shouldn't be too long. Look, I've had no sleep, I've got no clothes, I need a wash, and most important of all, I've got to go and see about my pub. Well, couldn't I come back when he's actually here? I'm hardly likely to run away to South America. I'm sorry, sir. Um, 
Uh, one or two things to sign and whatnot for the office back later, okay? Well, this would be understandable if I'd actually done something. So we've got to find the culprit, right? Right. So, like, good little detectives, we're looking for the motive. Right? Right. And where better to find the motive, today of all days, than a relative of Mrs. Caddy B. Are you with me? Oh, no. Oh, no, you don't pin this one on me. But, Arthur, there's got to be a motive, like I said. And that motive could be revenge, couldn't it? If she says she's been raped... She was raped. Her old man's away, and you're her brother-in-law. And, well, let's face it, you have been a naughty boy before. So you can't blame me for one. Well, you can stop wondering and all. Because I'd never do a thing like that. Never. All right, if I met the ponty little bastard, I'd want to kill him. I want to smash his face in. But I won't, because I'm not a violent man. Mr. Or Fowler. a bomb maker. Or an arsonist. So you just listen to me, Mr. Inspector. I did my time for a piece of foolishness. Stealing money. A petty crime. And I paid for it. And that enough? Must you keep on hounding me? me and since wrong? that day, I've done nothing. Nothing. So you just leave me alone. Will you please stop shouting or leave my shop? I don't want any trouble. I just want to ask you one simple little question. Last night, when Mrs. Beale was round at your house being comforted, and later on, when she was down the station giving a statement, where were you? At home. All the time? Yes. Are you absolutely sure about that? Yes. Yeah? I went out looking for Wilmot Brown, but I couldn't find him. That's better, Arthur. Now we're getting somewhere. Please. How about you taking us over to your house, giving us a nice cup of tea, and telling us exactly what you did last night? What you saw, who you spoke to. In short, we'd like a statement. A sensible statement. So you've got all the frozen stuff's in here, okay? Oh. Hey, Ali, okay. I've just heard something absolutely shocking. What's that, Doc? Kathy has been... What? Raped last night by Mr. W.B. Stop, stop. I always thought he was such a perfect... Excuse gentleman. me, Don. Oh, I didn't see you there, Ian. Perhaps you so could once in your life, you shut your big mouth. I, beg your I do not want my mother talked about like that. Have you got it? Well, I have just interested. This is not an interesting bit of gossip for you to tittle-tattle about. This is something that is real, hurtful, private and serious. Right? I'm sorry. OK. Mr. Vangel? We're happy. I'm Detective Inspector Gray, and this interview is taking place at Walford Police Station, Walford, London, East 20. The date is July the 8th, 1988, and the time is 12.45 hours. The statement I'm about to record will be given by Mr. James Sebastian Wilmot Brown of the Dagmar Public House, Turpin Road, Walford, London, East 20. Also present in the interview room are WPC Baxter and Mr. Nigel Fenshaw, solicitor present on behalf of Mr. Wilmot Brown. Shouldn't you be at work? I'm not going to work today. Yeah, so you can hardly clean the dead mark, can you? Any more than I can do the bar. It's one blessing, isn't it? Pete never liked me working evenings anyway, you know. I mean, where is he, Paul? I mean, he's taking his time, isn't he? Do you know, when I think about it, I never really liked bar work that much anyway. Look, there's no need for you to do all this. But what about Martin? Shouldn't you be collecting Martin? Michelle's got Martin. Cassidy. There's no need for all this. It looks fine to me. It's not even dirty. It is. It's filthy. All of it is filthy. Just look at it. Come on. Come on, Kathy. Now, today is not the day for spring cleaning. Come on. Come and sit down, love. I don't want to sit down. If I stop for a second, I'll start thinking about it. I mean, you've got to laugh, really, ain't you? It's quite funny when you do think about it. I mean, there's obviously something about me, isn't there? Something I do, I don't realise. There's got to be, otherwise it's just too much of a coincidence. I mean, why me again? Why me twice? It's going to be a flipping habit, isn't it? Now, listen, Cassie, you listen to me. What happened to you when you were 14 and, and what Wilmot Brown did to you last night? Well, they're just not connected. They are. They're not. Where are you going? I'm going to have a bath. But well, you've just had one. Well, I want another one, didn't I? Pauline. Yes, love. Don't go, will you? No, I won't. Well, the pub was fairly busy all evening, mainly because of the birthday party. Simon's guests were drinking at the bar, waiting till he was free to come off duty. Then it was closing time. Hold it a minute. Just so I get this absolutely clear. Simon Wicks, who's Mrs. Beale's stepson, was giving a party at her flat. Yes, because her husband was away. I see. And she was planning to stay at the Dagmar. No, I told you, with Pauline Fowler, her sister-in-law. Oh, I see. Go on. Well, she'd had a row over the phone with her husband and seemed quite upset. Well, she's been upset rather a lot lately. So, after we cleared up... Excuse me, we? Well, Cathy and I. Oh, Simon had already gone home. There were no other staff on duty. I see. Go on. So, after we cleared up, we had a little chat. We talked quite a lot, Cathy and I, and... 
Well, I like to think that's helped a lot with her domestic problems. I gave her a drink. And this is quite normal, is it? Having a drink together after hours. Oh, good Lord, no. Not when her husband's around. A jealous sort, is he? Well, I should say so. Watches her every move. And what's he jealous of, do you think? Well, me and her, I suppose. I suppose he thinks we're having an affair. And are you? Well, no such luck, I'm afraid. Well, it's certainly true we're very attracted to each other, but she's always been far too scared of her husband to do anything. But you think she would have liked her? Oh, I don't think. I know. Uh -huh. Well, good Lord, you can tell when a woman wants things to happen, can't you? By the way she dresses, the way she carries herself. Oh, yes, I mean, if it hadn't been for him, we would have got together ages ago. We've talked about it, you know, about the chemistry between us. I see. So last night, her husband being away, you asked her for a drink. It was your idea. Yes. Well, it was sort of understood, really. Go on. Well, we went upstairs to my sitting room. And whose idea was that? It was mutual. It was more comfortable up there. And again, this is the first time you've done this, gone upstairs after hours. Yes. And what was her attitude? Well, how do you mean? Well, was she happy about it? Or was she worried in any way? Reluctant? Well, I suppose she was a bit nervous in case Pauline found out. I mean, she's rather dominated by her in-laws. I mean, that's one of her problems, anyway. Well, we opened a bottle of champagne because it was a special occasion. A special occasion? Well, yes. I mean, we both knew why we'd come upstairs. I see. Well, I uh, put on some music, turned down the lights, and we sat together on the sofa. She was still a bit nervous and tense because, well, I suppose because this was the moment we'd both been waiting for for a long time. Go on. Well, I tried to set her at ease. You know, we talked about her row with her husband. I talked about my row with my ex-wife. We always seem to have a lot in common. And then, um, well, I, I think I told her how lovely she was looking. And, um, well, <laughs> you don't need the details beyond this point, surely. I mean, I'm not sure that I really want to describe it. Try. Well, we, we kissed and... Oh, come on, a good time was had by all. Let's leave it at that. On the other hand, let's not leave it like that, Mr. Wilmot Brown. You've been accused of raping a woman. Everyone's going around talking that he blooming murdered her or something. He only gave her one. I mean, she may say she didn't want it, but we all have to do things we don't want from time to time, don't we? I mean, a few minutes doing something we don't fancy. What's so terrible about that? I've got to work in the cafe this dinner time for a whole hour. I was just telling Frank. If you ask me, Cathy Beale should thank her lucky star she was getting it at all. This is right we're talking about, Charlie Carton. Not getting it, as you so romantically put it. How much, roughly? Ah, right, let's see. Well, we each brought a whiskey and soda up with us from the bar, and then we drank the champagne. Well, the whole bottle? Yes. Well, she drank a bit more than me, actually. I was being careful. You know, increases the desire, decreases the ability. Well, she... Probably was quite tiddly now, I come to think of it. Um, well, she was pretty amorous, if you follow me, and I suppose that could have been the drink. Well, you know what women are like with a few inside them? Changed creatures. Never ceases to amaze me. Mm -hmm. I, I want to say again, make it quite clear, there was no question of me using any force. She was a willing participant. It was only afterwards that she began to panic when she realised what time it was. What time was it? About one. Well, she knew Pauline would have waited up for her, and she was scared Pete would get to hear how late she'd got in. He was bound to ask, him being so jealous. And at that point, her mood totally changed. She seemed terrified to resent what had happened. Well, I was rather hurt, in fact. Anyway, I told her to go home and tell the truth up to a point. Say we had a drink and a chat. And she said Pete would never believe her. Said he'd kill her. I think she was really frightened he'd beat her up. Apparently, he is a violent sort of chap. Well, she became quite hysterical. I offered to drive her home, but she just ran out. Well... Afterwards, I, I felt well, rather upset. You know, upset that a nice evening had turned so sour. I wasn't feeling particularly tired, probably because of the champagne. So I decided to drown my sorrows by going into town to a club I know. Well, I came back this morning, you know the rest. You say that you left the Dagmar at one? Yes. Mr. Watson, the wine bar, saw you leave at 12.15. Oh, no, no, not possible. He said you left the door unlocked. He went across to check and found Cathy inside, in a distressed state. Well, he, he would say that, wouldn't he? 
I, they're, they're all in it together. You see, there's a sort of vendetta against me around here. They want to get rid of me. I speak with the wrong accent, come from the wrong class. Later, you were seen by the two brothers that run the minicab firm at about three, returning to the Dagmar. Ah, yes. Well, I did come back, actually. I, I'd run out of cash. Well, I, I didn't mention it before. Well, it's not important, is it? You didn't come back to see if Cathy was still there? Well, she'd gone ages ago. How many times do I have to tell you? Or to start a fire yourself for some reason. I beg your pardon. Now, surely you're not suggesting my client's a part of his own business. It has been, no. How do you account for the bruises our doctor found on the complainant? Uh, you don't have to answer any of these questions, James. No, no, it's all right. I've got nothing to hide. As for the bruises, if they do exist, perhaps her husband did them. As I've said, he's a violent man. Or perhaps I did them in the passion of the moment. Well, some women bruise quite easily, I believe. Particularly, of course, if she's taken by force. Excuse me, can I interrupt here? My client is merely giving a statement, Inspector Gray. This isn't supposed to be a cross-examination. Mm. He is denying the charge, and he has the right to give his account without having words put into his mouth. Of course. The woman quite clearly consented to intercourse, then regretted it later, and this is the whole burden of what we're trying to put down on that tape. There is no case for him to answer, as far as I can see. It'll be thrown out at once by the CPS, no question about it. Fine. That's for them to decide. But it's my job to try and get the most truthful account of what happened. So if you don't mind, we will continue. Mr. Wilmot Brown, about the bruising. Was the lady fully undressed at the time the incident took place? I've already told you. She didn't take her clothes off. She was shy. So, you definitely didn't notice any bruises? Oh, how could I? Apart from anything else, I couldn't see very much because the light was so low. Oh, look, how much longer is this going to go on for? I've got a hell of a lot to do. I've already been here over two hours. Wow. We should be able to get in before the magistrates tomorrow with any luck, shouldn't we? What? Mr. Wilmot Brown, when you finished your statement, I shall be formally charging you with rape and we'll be holding you in custody until the morning. So, let's get on, shall we? And I wouldn't have thought he was the type, not in a million years. Sorry? To do what he did, I would have thought Cathy could have rung rings round. I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. Cathy Beale and Wilmot Brown. What about them? Well, haven't you heard? Well, I've heard about the Dagmar, if that's what you mean. No, 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 about what he did. I mean, I wouldn't have thought he was the type. I thought he was gay, anyway. Now, what I don't understand is if a woman didn't want me, not that it's ever happened to me, perhaps I'm lucky that way. But suppose she didn't. As far as I'm concerned, end of story. The idea of forcing it on her is absolutely disgusting. Pat? Look at those eyes. Oh. Yes, yeah, terrible bags he's got. Yeah. Terrible. And his poor little hands look all rough from the washing oh. up. Shut out there, Perry, you leave <laughs> off. And Mehmet, he's got housemaid's knee, haven't you, darling? OK, you've had your little joke. Well, we certainly have done, and that was just watching you two clowns trying to run that calf. You see, couple of Temper, temper. Oh, no, come on now. We can't help it. He's had no sleep. Mm. OK, now listen. No, 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 do listen just for a change, right? We have been watching you two trying to run that calf the last couple of days, and quite honestly, you're hopeless. You're nothing but a pair of lazy good for nothing. Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> OK, we've had time to think about it. OK, we've come here to discuss terms, all right? We've told you our terms over and over again. You buy me into the partnership, right? One third, one third, one third. We give her our money. She banks it safely in her own account, so he can't get his hands on it. Yes. Right. Thank you. And that way I get something back for all the work I've put into that room in place. OK, agreed. Zim becomes a partner, Sue gets a little messy. Listen, uh, SOS from Charlie Cotton. He's trying to boil some eggs in the microwave and they've exploded, all right? Well, let Charlie Cotton in charge, I'd be like, I don't believe this. Uh, I thought you was Pete. I forgot his key or something. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to barge in on you, but I just heard what's happened and I just felt I had to come and see you. I don't know why. Listen, I just want you to know I'm, I'm very sorry, that's all. It's OK. What happened? I mean, how did it happen? I don't know. Well, well is there anything I can do to help? No, thanks. Look, I'm sorry, I just don't know what to say to you. I feel so inadequate. Are you all right? Oh, fine. Ooh, all the time it was happening. Part of me was thinking, right, thinking, come on, Kath, what's the best thing to do? You know, things you read, programs you see on the telly. Scream, kick, poke your fingers in their eyeballs. Don't let yourself be a victim. That's what they say, didn't they? Don't let yourself become a victim. It's just what I did. I was so scared. But why? 
That's what I keep asking myself. Why did I let myself be so scared? Taffy, he's been trained by the army. He's been trained to fight. You didn't stand a chance. His hands got me really hard, you know, ear and ear. Just squeezing and pinching. And his eyes were so angry. He was, he was like another person altogether. But I didn't stop struggling. I never gave in. Look, that, that, that's got to be Pete this time. Darling, look, you don't think it's him, do you? I'm, you no, look, it's all right. Just wait here, OK? Is Mrs Beale in? We're police officers. Oh, yeah, come in. <clears throat> Kathy, it's the police. Sorry to trouble you again, Mrs Beale. Only I'm glad to tell you that we've apprehended Mr Wilmot Brown and taken a statement from him. And as a result, we need to ask you just to clear up just a few little points. Do you want me to stay? No, it's all right. Donna, thanks for coming around, love. Where is he? Look, indoors, I think. Oh, you go away for the night and come back and look at it. Nothing, sweet. Penny Adams. You'd think of his own mother laid up. At least he tried with a bit of a net, but... By the way, that's okay. She's all right, Pete. Oh, good. That's a lot of my mind. You really sounded worried when you phoned this morning. See, the trouble I had with Mum. She wanted to come back with me. That's why I'm late. What was it? Something she had in a dagma, I suppose. Is she up the back? Yeah, but listen, Pete. I'm... Look, I'll go and see. I'll get the stall out later. See you. Tell him I want to see him. Now, Pete, slow down, will you? I can't get a word in edgeways. I've got something I want to tell you. Now, Kathy, she wasn't exactly ill. What? Look, we can't talk here. Come home a minute, will you? Probably be better if Pauline tells you anyway. What's going Come. on? Was this the first time he'd asked you to stay behind for a drink? No. He'd asked you before? Occasionally. But you'd always said no? Yes. Why did you say yes this time? Look, what are you driving at? Was it because your old man was away? No, I keep telling you, it was because of a combination of things. I never intended to stay. Well, why go upstairs with him, then, if you didn't intend to stay? Look, I said all this to, to Lynn. He, he went up with the drinks, and I didn't want to make things unpleasant between us. So, by mutual agreement, you went upstairs? No, that's not what I said. He went, and I followed, but I didn't want to. And then you opened a bottle of champagne? No, he did. Mrs Beal, none of this quite adds up. You're an intelligent woman, a woman who runs her own business, who's worked for the Samaritans. And yet you found yourself upstairs drinking champagne with your boss after hours while your old man's away and you didn't want to be there. I'm sorry, Cathy, but if we're going to establish a case for you, we've got to arrive at the exact truth. And I've told you the exact truth. How much champagne did you drink? I don't know. Hardly any. Two or three glasses? No, not nearly that much. How much champagne was left in the end? I don't know. I wasn't exactly measuring the level of the bottle, was I? I'd other things on my mind. I wasn't drunk, if that's what you're thinking. Well, nevertheless, maybe you had a, a few drinks earlier. Then you had the whiskey and soda he poured for you downstairs. Then you had the champagne. Wouldn't you have been just a little bit tipsy? I know I would. Maybe tipsy enough to find yourself agreeing to things you wouldn't normally agree to? No, it wasn't like that! Look, look, if that's what had happened, I mean, why should I be making all this song and dance about it? I would have just kept quiet, wouldn't I? I wouldn't have the bruises I've got, would I? And I wouldn't be in the state I'm in now. Kathy, the fact is, he's saying you consented. Well, he's a bloody liar. Hey, hey. Yo, mate. Let me hold the animal, Shut mate. up! Hey. All right, you're giving me TV action here, all right? Shut up! I found her. I know what he did to her, all right? I'm not going to stand by and let anyone take liberties of my best clothes, Mrs. Now. Shut up! Get him out of there! And don't look at me like that. I didn't do it. But you're upset, your interests were taken care of, all right? Are you happy? Now go back to Kath and look after because she needs you. But you believed me this morning. I don't understand what's happened. Look, Kath, have a little think about it, eh? In the cold light of day. Maybe you drank more than you meant to. Fancied your boss just a little bit more than usual. Then with your old man away, did things you don't normally do. Then got scared at what you'd done. Especially if your old man's the violent type. But I understand he is. That's not true. Pete's never laid a finger on me. All right. But like I say, have a little think, eh? Take your time. 
Then come and tell us. There's no comeback. No one's going to be cross. It'll just save us all an awful lot of time and effort. But he held me down by force. I was screaming and, and kicking. Well, if that's not rape, you tell me what is. I'm not dropping the charges, if that's what you're asking. I'm going to see this through to the bitter end. All right, all right. No one's suggesting you drop the charges, love. We believe you. Catherine! It's Pete. Pete. It's OK. I heard what's happened. Mr Beale, Detective Inspector Gray. Is Slag still down the neck? Yes. Can I see him? I'm sorry, sir. I won't touch him, I promise. I just want to tell him what I think of him. I don't think that will do any good. We've got him and we've got a statement. And later on today, he will be charged. Yeah. Well, he better be banged up good and proper. Or I don't ask about the consequences. Everything is being done that can be done, Mr. Beale. Thanks very much for seeing us again, Mrs. Beale. Doubtless we'll be in touch again soon. I understand the proceedings to you. He'll go up before the magistrates, then all the notes will go down to the Crown Prosecutor, and he'll decide if there's a case to answer. So good luck, love. And sorry about this afternoon, but it had to be done. I'll see you out. I'll have to take the statement from you later, sir. But meantime, your wife needs all the support you can give. It's OK, Kath. I heard what happened from Pauline. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, please, Kath. You don't have to say that. He's denying everything. Saying I'm lying. That's why the police was round again. I don't know what sort of story he's made up. I swear to God I'm telling the truth. Of course you are. We all know that. He said you wouldn't believe me. He said best not to report it because you wouldn't believe me. But I didn't lead him on. I promise. I tried all I could to get him off. I struggled with him. Kathy, all right, all right. I mean, I was screaming, Pete. I was screaming, nobody heard me. You've got to believe me. I don't believe you. Never think different. I've got bruises. I've got bruises. I'll show you the bruises. Look. Look, Kathy. Look, I need to see I've bruises. Got... Get off. Don't touch me. I thought she was supposed to be ill. Well, she is. She was. Well, she's bluffing. She's going to see that old girl. Oh, oh Pete. How do you explain it, sis? It's because you come back, that's why. She thinks there's something up. She's concerned, that's all. Well, she wants to poke her nose, eh? Pete! Oh, that's the old babe. Now, come on. We're going to tell her, sis. Her favourite son's going to commit murder. No, we don't tell her anything. That nose ointment? She's bound to find out. Yes, all right. When she does, there's going to be ructions. We'll just have to stall her as long as possible. Does Arthur know? Oh. Right, Arthur. Arthur? What? Uh, I've done. Get the big moody from the governors. They won't look me straight in the eye. They never even said good morning. Yeah, well, we've got worse things than that to worry about. Right, what? Mum's on her way back from the OMC. But she's ill. Or supposed to be. Oh, God. You've got enough on here without her coming, the heavy. Well, I'm going to keep my head down. Out of sight, out of mind. Mm, you're not the only one. It's all yours now, mate. How do I get around the market regulations? I'm sure you and Darren will be able to work that out, aren't they? Yeah. But do us a favour, keep her on the place for five minutes, yeah? I don't know, day one of your new career, already you want a tea break? Go on, I'll do it, old time's sake. Hello, stranger. Oh, hey, Cubs. You heard about the new job? Yeah, not the details, eh? Yeah, I met this geezer, Trev. Do I know him? No, he's new. Entertainment's manager on a cruise ship. Swung it so I can do the disco. Not bad money. Mm -hmm. Talk about coming out smelling the roses. Well, congratulations. <laughs> so what are you going to do about your stall? Ah, it's all rods now. In the Navy. <laughs> Remember, we danced to that once. So, uh, when do you go? Tomorrow. But you sure you're doing the right thing? Now, you know you can be talking to anything. I've told you before. You've nagged me before. I'm sorry. No, I've missed it. Roderick, man, how you doing? Good, right. Richard? They gave me a lot of hassle, man. Who did? The filth. They know about me getting by them threatening Wilmot. So what'd you tell them? Tell them they're pointing a finger in the wrong direction. Suggested a more likely candidate. Well, I'm not sure, or what? Look, we'll find out soon enough. Just keep out of her way and say nothing. Well, someone's gonna have to. It'd be best if she didn't learn from strangers. OK, then I tell her. But I choose the right moment. No, it's best coming from a woman. I'll have a little chat, let's see what sort of mood she's in, and then I'll give her the bad news. Any news from Wilmot now? 
Well, um, I heard he was staying in the hotel. Where? I don't know. Well, find out, sis. Pete. Find out. You got your feet under the table once, darling. That's the first and last time. I want no more phone calls, all right? If necessary, yes. I wouldn't charge your own. He might look like a big softie on the outside, but he could knock you into a cocktail with both hands tied behind him. So just leave me alone. If that was your ex-old man again... Yes, it was. And I know how to deal with it. I don't want you plodding in there in your size nines. I'm just sick of violence. What does he want, anyway? He thinks I'm onto a good little earner here. Wants a share of the profits without him to lift a finger, just like the old days. Whatever you saw in that man, I just do not know. He was good for a cuddle. In them days, I needed lots of cuddles. Now, please, Frank, can we change the subject? Yeah, come on, babe. You're not unhappy now, are you? Now I'm beginning to feel human. Took long enough. Still need a cuddle now and then. Wait here. Don't look ill to me. Hard oh, to say. Looks a bit pale. Do you reckon? Don't you? Don't know. The name's Ali, not Roger, okay? Now get back to base. If your wheels are turning your own, it's to stop your moaning, will ya? See ya, thanks for that, yeah? Oh, here he is. Well, is she ill? I don't know. Well, did she say she was ill? Yeah. And is she? I can't tell. She's bluffing. Is she bluffing? I don't know. She might be, but then again, she might not. She is bluffing. Can't be certain, though, can we all? What did she have to say? Not a lot. She just gave me this list of demands. Demands? Yeah. She don't want to see anyone. Well, that's something to be thankful for. Except she does. I'll make up your mind, son. Well, she wants to see certain people at set times. Well, I tell you what, she finally clipped the lid, the old girl. Gone gaga, seen her. Well, what does she want to see people about? I don't know, she didn't say. Told you, gaga. Well, she must have a reason. Well, she ain't letting on. Off her bleeping trolley. Who does she want to see first? You, mate. <laughs> Ian said you wanted to see me. You're late. 60 seconds late. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't think a minute would matter. And that sleeping bag on my bed. Remove it. You'll have to kick down here tonight. Well, yeah, all right. Is that what you want to see me about? No, it isn't. Sit down. You feeling better? No. Nope. Worse. I'm sorry about that. What's the problem? Old age. What are you doing? What does it look like what I'm doing? Now, look. 
When I finish this, I want you to post them. One to Kenny and the other to Elizabeth. Is that what you want to see me about? No, it is. No, no, what's going on? Why aren't you at the Dagmar? And why are you keeping down here tonight? Dagmar's closed. Someone threw a petrol bomb in it. Good God. What's happening to Walford? Petrol bomb? It's worse than the war. At least that was against Hitler. This is against ourselves. Who did it? Don't know. Dennis Watts, probably. Now, don't you strive to be like him, Simon, because that's what you're doing. Don't think I hadn't noticed. You're not a den. You're your own man. Yeah, whoever that is. No matter where you came from. It's what you are. And what am I? Try looking at the mirror next time you shave yourself. That's why I asked you to come and see me. Could be a bill. I could be anything. Why'd you have to copy anyone? Supposing they was no good. Ever thought of that? Why don't you forget about them? Make something of yourself by yourself. They say parents uh, mess up their kids' lives. They're rather too strict, too soft. You ought to think yourself lucky you ain't got a dad to muck your life up. Ever thought of that? Will you? Will you think about it for me? And stop moping about like a wet weekend and doing a pint-sized impression of then. Now, will you? Is that what you want to see me about? Well, will you go know, it? You don't know, make me very happy. You wouldn't want to make me unhappy, would you? I mean, you, you might be a bill. I wouldn't want to make you unhappy, Gran, even if I'm not a bill. No. Yeah, all right, I'll give it some thought. Good boy. I'd like you to have this. What is it? It's a rock. A pebble. A stone. I don't know. <laughs> My Albert picked it up off the beach and gave it me. South End. On our honeymoon. <laughs> so it's nearly an antique. I'd like it to have a good home. Thanks, Greg. You can go now. Was that it? It is. Oh, Dr. Lee, just a person I wanted to see. Graham wants you in at her place 12 o'clock sharp. Don't be late. Really? What's it all about? Oh, she didn't say. All I got was my instructions. Now, you guys can come there because she's wants uncle around here at the same time, all right? Uncle? I appreciate the company, Pauline. Thanks, I should have this coming out me as soon, but I just didn't know where to go. I've got to stay out of her way. Hiya. Oh, hello. What did she want? What did she say? Well, I don't know, really. She gave me all this stuff about me being my own man, and then she gave me this. What is it? It's a lump of rock. Pete's right, you know, she's going to see now. Rixie. I mean, look, there's Arthur fretting about his job because Mr and Mrs Kareem aren't speaking to him. And then there's Pauline hiding in the long dress because she's frightened of seeing Lou. Looking out the window again. Remember, we used to do that every Sunday morning. Oh, so it's not just me nagging you've been missing. It's, um, this Trev, he's OK, is he? Yeah, yeah, he's alive. Well, I hope you're being careful. What, what's all this about? Oh, humour. She's an old lady. Oh, I'm no spring chicken myself. <laughs> Sit down, gentlemen, uh, oh, please. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Right. You feeling better now, Lou? I'm feeling the same, thank you, Uncle. I'll have a look at you before I go, Lou. That won't be necessary, Doctor. Thank you. Thanks very much. Right. Now, while I was in Leon's Sea, I was thinking, outside the family, you've been the two best friends I've ever had. Well, I hope we'll continue to be, oh, well, oh, don't, Please don't interrupt, Doctor. I'll lose me train of thought when people interrupt me. Think of it, you've been better than family on some occasions. I mean, you've looked after this bag of bones for the last five years, unless a man would have given up on the job. And you've put up with my moods. And you know how to keep a secret. You're one of the originals. You both are. <laughs> we go back a long way, this lot. Don't know they're born. I'm pleased you've uh, 
Made up your mind what you're going to do about your future. It's good to have a plan, otherwise you just stagnate. I don't intend to stagnate. You've come to a decision about something, haven't you? <laughs> I know what you're thinking. You, uh, her mind's going. I just want, want it on record that I appreciate your friendship over the years. Oh. Uncle, you've looked after me finances and you've helped me with me special arrangements and don't think I don't know you've been undercharging me. You've been very kind to my family when they've been in trouble and half of them don't know the good you've done to them. And I want to thank you for it. No, no, no. I ain't been at the brandy. I was sitting in a shelter on the prom, looking out at the sea, and I thought, people don't usually say the things they ought to. They usually leave it too late. I decided I wasn't going to make that mistake. used to be Albert's. You once admired it. I'd like you to have it. Oh, Lou. <laughs> oh, I know you set your heart on the clock. <laughs> but I'm afraid Ethel's got that. You'll have to have these instead. They made them better in these days. I hope you'll find a use for them. Oh, look the Oh, the Jews, they've been good to me. I miss them. Well, if you two gentlemen have finished your tea, you better be off. I've got a lot to get on with. All oh, right. Oh, thanks, Pen Pops. Yeah, now's next to the third degree. My order's 12.45, that's for you. She you don't order me around. Look, uh, you better go. Get it over. And you emerge in a dodgy mood. And, uh, take it easy. Yeah, all right. Here, Mum. Best luck. Right, Pauline. That's me done. As you notice, everything ship shape in Bristol fashion. Thanks. I hope I have more customers than you did. I want to keep yourself busy. Oh, don't worry about Lou. I know her of old. She's just keeping you all on the run. Yeah, well, she's scheming something. No, she just wants to be the centre of attention. I was reading all about it in this psychology magazine the other day. Attention seeking, it's called. Oh. Hello, love. You on your dinner break? Oh, don't mention food, Pauline. I'm famished. I could demolish an entire bar of white chocolate. Thank you. Your wages. It's not your day for getting paid. It is if it's your last day. It's happened again, hasn't it? Arthur Fowler's been sacked. Oh, Arthur, why? Because Walford wouldn't be Walford if I wasn't on the dole. Oh, why? It's a bill, isn't it? They've been round asking questions about the Dagmar, about the fact that I've got a record, about the fact that I'm a known criminal. Yeah, but they know you had nothing to do with that. I mean, the old Bill knows yeah, that. Yeah, but once your card is marked. Is that what they said? Because if they did, they're in for a mouthful from me. I'll take them to a tribunal. You've got to stand up for yourself. Hold on, hold on. They didn't mention the police. They're too clever for that. They gave me the excuse about it being cheaper keeping the business in the family, but it is an excuse, Pauline. I know the real reason. So here we are, back where we started. Oh, now put that on your gravestone. We managed. Arthur, we will manage. Would happen to day of all days, though, wouldn't it, with Mum playing up? Mm. Let's not tell her, eh? Thanks for telling me. I appreciate it. Could have kept it from me. Well, that's what the others wanted. They said to keep it from you to the last minute because you'd only go spare. Old bag. I thought I should just come clean, get it over with. Best way. Yeah, you're right. You know, when Pete left me at Leon C, in a blind panic it was. I knew it was something to do with you. He might be a bit of a burp sometimes, but he's always loyal to his missus. That's why I wanted to see you first. I'm not first, am I? By my calculations, I'm at least fourth. What's going on, Mum? Is that clock right? 
Yes, yeah, but on. Where does it all go? Well, if you must know, I'm having a bit of a spring clean, a tidy up, you know, sorting out my affairs. So I'm just in time, too. I used to enjoy living here, now look at it. It's always been hell, Mum. The old days were just as bad as now, worse probably. You're just looking at all of it through rose-coloured glasses. Wilmot Brown, you doing anything about him? I'm determined to take him to court. What are your chances? Oh, Slim. You know, it's his word against mine. But it's the principle. You and your principles. Now, you get back to work. I've got plenty to get on with. Well, if you're sure you're going to be all right. Yes, I am. Yeah. Thanks for the straight talking. The others would have been all emotional, sentimental. You know what Pete's like. Yeah. See you later, then. Your old man must know why he's been left to run the pub single-handedly. Why is it they always send the youngsters? Is that meant to make me feel small or something? No, he didn't send me. I was where you were. Well, why'd you do that? Make yourself available. You're expecting a visitor. Who? Gwen. What you on about? Well, she wants to see everyone. You're next. Yeah, well, you can't even tell me what you're on about. It's Lou. Oh, yeah. I gathered that much. She just got back from Leon's scene. She wants to see everyone. You've got a couple of minutes to make yourself ready. I don't have to see that old witch. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't have a go at me. I'm just a messenger boy. Anyway, what's it about? Your guess is as good as mine. All right. There you go, young master. Thanks, mate. You're welcome. Pauline did a spring clean last week. Chaos. It's not that sort of spring clean, Al. She's sorting her life out. She's busy, mate. She don't want to talk to you anyway, so leave it out. OK? Your stepfather. Remember the ugly man? Never seen him. Oh, yeah. Your mum's secret fortune. <laughs> well, some again, Jim. Oh, yeah, cheers, Frank. Yeah, you got it. Lovely guys, haven't I? I really ain't got a pink economy. <laughs> Gambling Jeff under the wine bottle has got to be wetting themselves. I mean, this guy's crawling with them. The firm's as sweet as Muscatel, mate. The woman out of the way, they're sitting pretty, and if the worst comes to the worst, I've got a great scapegoat. Hello. Still a rocker. Cheers, Frank. Oh, by the way, Gary and Wayne send their love. Oh, yeah, where'd you see them? Last week, dinner party. Outside Cape. Mm. Well, I speak very highly of you. Oh, that's because I like a bit of rough. It's free of you. So listen, what's your trope going to say when he finds out you've been boozing with your ex? Well, I won't tell him if you won't. Don't think you won't be missed. I'm gone yet. Well, you know what? I'm an old puss where he's to recognise. I'm the old limpist. Too much Chanel number five. They're all too political intellectual for me now, ever. But it's bad enough you women burn your bras. Have a good thing. Yeah, thanks, mate. Here you go. I wouldn't advise you, Dad. Just fancy having a drink with Gran. She's on the way over now. Leave it, Frank. Mate? Sorry. What's your name, here we go. All right, Lou. All right, bud, you on you, Lou. It's free country. I don't think it's to mind you borrowing out at all. I knew you was all right. How'd you know that? Oh, I was just guessing. Have you seen Ethel? Yes. How is she? Fine. Oh, that's nice to know. I told Pauline, I said, there's nothing wrong with your mother, and here you are out and about, guzzling your usual. <laughs> She's the last one, Doc. I'm going on the wagon walk to this. Seems to be working out fine, yeah. Took all them years and all that play in the field to find Mr. Wright, eh? Funny when you think he was the one I started off with. Yeah, life can be a bastard, can't it? And you, doll, take care. Yeah, don't forget to let me know if you hear anything about Mr. Jack the Ladwicks. I've got a good thing going here. I don't want him chucking a spanner in the works. You're dead right. Tell our doll. Got your message. All right, if I come in. Luby will be in for light. Usually charging like a bull in a china shop. What's it all about, Lou? Oh, yeah, you're doing the rounds. More old scores to sell? Yeah, come to make me peace. Thought we'd already done that, shaking hands on it, even. 
Ah, oh, that was just about Kenny. Come to make me peace for good. Leave him, Walford? Retiring to the seaside, are you? None of your business. Oh. Making your peace, saying your goodbye so you can go with a clear conscience. Sit down. Thanks. Don't expect me to make things easy for you. You never liked me and the feeling was mutual. I ain't about to say sorry, Lou. It weren't personal, because it bloody was. I'll never forget the way you interfered in my life. The memory's like a scar, and I don't forget things easy. I bear grudges, you know what I mean? So just say your piece. Cast your spells, mix your potions, stick your pins in me, and then get your broomstick and go. When you divorced my Pete, I was glad. Oh, I know, I kicked up a fuss saying I didn't believe in divorce. Well, I don't. But I was glad you weren't the right type for him. You weren't right for each other. You had too much life in you. You got bored easy, or you did. You was always looking for excitement round the corner. You wasn't a homemaker, which is what my Pete needed. I mean, that's what he got from his mum. We, we do everything for them, we spoil them, and then we send them out helpless into the world, hoping they'll find a, a substitute mum. I don't think you ever come under that heading. Maybe you was being personal, Pat, but I wasn't. I was just fighting for my own. I think I know why you were like you were. You found the perfect man for you right at the beginning, didn't you? Being the sort of person you are, you fell for him, up, line and sinker. Well, you've never done things by halves, have you? And he let you down badly. You've been taking your revenge ever since on all men. Well, I think you've done enough damage over the years. You've had enough revenge to last you a lifetime. I think it's time to call all, don't you? Let bygones be bygones. I mean, uh, you're bloody old enough. You must have settled down now. I believe you found yourself a man. He looks all right to me. Your type. Don't lose this one, Pat. I don't think you're going to find another. So, you come here for my sake, not yours. <laughs> well, well, wonders will never cease. Lou Beale being polite and unselfish on the same day. I don't think I can take too much more of this without a stiff drink. When you're married, my Pete, at the reception, Pete made a speech, thanking me and your mum for getting the food all ready and laying the tables out all nice. Then I got a big bunch of flowers, and you gave me this brooch. I've never worn it. I, I suppose it reminded me of you. Oh, that's unkind now, come to think of it. Well, someone... May as well get a use for it. You may bear grudges, Pat, but I can't. I'd like you to have it. Tell you the truth, it's too flashy for me. That's more like the Lou Beale I remember. Ta. I accept. Hmm. <laughs> I got this in the Mark House Road. It was a toss-up between this and a ruby one. This one was cheaper. Right. You're still a cow, Lou, but you're a fair one. Don't get sentimental, Pat. Why change the habits of a lifetime? There's more. Wixie. Simon. What about him? You know who his father is. Of course I do. Do one decent thing in your life. Put him out of his misery. 